know about Wednesday in the Word. Share it on Facebook. If you're not following us, follow the church on Facebook at Union Grace, Twitter at Union Grace, and Instagram at Union Grace. Here's Pastor Smith for Wednesday in the Word. Thank you. This line is now unmuted. All callers are unmuted. All callers are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. All right. All callers are muted. All right. Thank you so much for another uh, invite to come to Wednesday in the Word. This and conference is being recorded. And our Ustream broadcast is up for those of you who like to view via uh, Ustream. You can go to Ustream and type in Union Grace and look for Wednesday and the Word and get on Ustream as well with us. And tonight, as we have been dealing with um, something that's just to kind of give you an idea of general revelation, I uh, want to thank those who have been calling in. And I know it's been, I've been off last week, uh, it was away. Uh, ministering at another church and uh, so we just decided to uh, wait until this week to get launched back up so let your family and friends know Wednesday and the Word is back um, and get your Bibles ready and we're going to go into prayer in just a moment um, and ask God's blessings on what we're going to do tonight um, and wherever you are whether you're viewing us you you stream or you are listening via the conference call we're glad that you are here tonight for another Wednesday in the Word. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for another time that we share together. We pray, Father, that you would open both our minds and our hearts that first we will understand your Word and our hearts that we would have the will to do your Word. Now, Lord, bless the Word that we are to receive tonight. Help us uh, to carry it out that we may become more like you in everything that we do. It is our prayer in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Um, for being with us tonight and uh, want to get back into what we were dealing with. I've been teaching just on some general topics of uh, the revelation and that we talked about in previous weeks that the scripture is the word of God, that the scripture means the writings and it is the word of God and that God has revealed his word to us his will to us and we talked about in the previous weeks about interpretation because this is what where most people stumble uh, when they read the Bible but that we did see that we can if we take our time learn some things um, that we can learn how to do proper interpretation of the Bible um, and most people I believe want to do um, proper interpretation of the Bible and so um, if you want to do proper interpretation of the Bible uh, you you have to um, you know learn certain things that are necessary um, for you to do proper interpretation of the Bible and so um, here's where we have come in to kind of help you with that and we talked about how God wants us to understand his will because he wants us to understand his word. All right, um, and then um, tonight we began to talk about a little bit in the last week about general revelation. You've been hearing me use that term a lot, and this is why God is going to be able to judge the whole world because of what, what he's going to judge them on general revelation, okay? And God's uh, reality uh, is known to all. That's what God's going to base judgment on. That everybody all over the world can see uh, the created order. And we're going to go uh, into Psalms 19 uh, tonight. So get your Bibles. Psalms 19. And we're going to begin um, at verse number 1. And we'll walk through this particular um, text tonight. It deals with part of general revelation, deals with some other things, but um, it's it's very clear that um, so when you say your friends don't go to church or they don't believe in God or they're outside the faith or they're in uh, caught up in their own world, 
that um, or they are agnostics, they question the existence of God, or they don't believe in the existence of God, um, that one of the things God is going to be judging all on is what we call general revelation. And I want you to get that in your mind because it's very important as you witness and as you talk to other people, and they will know that we are, even though we are what, what the Bible calls the crown of creation, we are not the creator of the world. Okay, you and I did not make the birds of the air. We did not make the fish of the sea. We did not make the beasts of the field. We did not make uh, the animals that creep and crawl along the ground. Um, all of these things existed and coexisted with us in creation. We didn't make the stars, the moon, the sky, the sky. We didn't create this planet. We didn't make the universe. Um, we didn't make the universes. We didn't make the Mars, the Venuses, the Jupiters that scientists have labeled these other planets that are in our solar system. And so all of this will be brought into judgment as a part of God's case on general revelation. That God's reality should be known to all. Okay? Now, um, now even though we scientists are always uh, trying to give us the factual understandings of how creation came about, it still does not uh, negate the fact that we have a God who is the creator of the universe. Okay, And if you would, for just one moment, and I know I've indulged your patience for just a minute, but if you would hold your spot in uh, Psalms 19, and let's just go um, for the sake of those who may have never read this, they may be with us or haven't read it in a long time, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and I believe this is where we were talking and sometimes the Bible says from the New Revised Standard I'm gonna read just a portion of this in Genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning um, when God created the heavens and the earth and you've been with me before you know I've, I've talked about two things that Genesis opens up by letting us know that first of all that the beginning God is the creator of all beginnings and that God in himself is a creator and that God created both the sky and the earth if you would that's what the heavens denotes here the heavens and the earth and the earth was formless and it talks about the formless and the darkness covering the face of the deep and how God took chaos and brought it into creation and so it says, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Verse 3 says, then God said, and that's a very important thing, that the authoritative way in which God brought about creation is that God spoke it into existence. And that's important. Listen to what the Bible says, there, there be light and there was light. And God saw in verse 4 that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness and in verse 5 God called the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning the first day so not only is God the creator of the universe but God is also the creator of time okay because we serve a God who is transcendent God is not trapped by time okay but time is what dictates our existence and our lives. And then if we go to verse 6, the Bible says, And God said, Let the dome uh, in the midst of the waters, let it be separated from the waters, uh, separate the waters from the waters. And verse 7 says, So God made the dome. In other words, this is the, this is the understanding of the writer at the time that the earth was like a dome that set over a part of the planet and is this like a cake dome that's why you see the term using dome here okay um, and this is how revelation came to the writer and the writer is writing out of his understanding okay what God is saying and he says in verse 7 so God made the dome separate the waters that are under the dome from the waters that are above the dome talking about the sky and now the seas and it was so and God called the dome sky 
and there was evening and there was morning the second day so we see God created that atmosphere which is called the sky and then in verse 9 the Bible says and God said let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear and it was so so now we see the creation of the earth we know the earth is two-thirds water okay and if the waters were ever to rise all dry ground would would, would uh, be underground underwater excuse me and so in verse 10 God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good that it had it had carried out its purpose when when something when the text is talking about something is good that it is serving its purpose it is carrying out its purpose for which God created it to be that's the that's the state of good not a state of being good uh, bad or good best or better bad you know or better but in the state that good is that it is it is it has become what God has created it to be so it is good okay all right so now let's see then in verse 11 he says then God said let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seeds and the fruits of every kind on the earth that bears fruit with the seed in it and I've shared with you before um, you know I try not to eat anything that's seedless you know they got these seedless grapes now and all the seed I don't know how they manufacture that stuff with the seed out of it but I don't eat it <laughs> you know I'll just be inconvenient because the Bible says the seed is supposed to be in the fruit in the grapes so I don't eat all that stuff they didn't did some in the laboratory and y'all the uh, experimental rats they are gonna use for the next 20 years from now something wrong um, but anyway that's just my pet peeve because I just read the text say the fruit say the seed is in it wall of mineral seed pumpkin seed you know the orange seed the apple seed the grape seed all of it is in there and listen to the word and it was so and verse 12 says and the earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seeds of every kind and and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it okay and God saw that it was good that it carried out its purpose okay so to be good I carry out purpose that that which I have been created to do now we're gonna see this and verse 13 and there was evening and there was morning the third day okay so now you see by the third day the earth has um, been formed the vegetation has been given um, and this is Judaism in its in their calendar of the days as they are interpreting the, the revelation of God they are incorporating their calendar uh, the way they kept the calendar okay so look at verse 14 and God said let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years so especially here in Michigan where we get all four seasons we get to see all four seasons but we go from uh, the winter to the spring uh, to the summer uh, to the autumn or the fall um, and now we're in a fall season in Michigan as well uh, and we get to see the leaves changing color for those of you who live in Michigan and and so God set the seasons in place notice this now and and then um, so all of this is a part of what I call uh, general revelation okay nobody in the earth can say they ain't never seen winter or spring or summer or fall you know this is just a part of the general revelation you see it every day the sky the moon the star all this stuff we're talking about is gonna be a part of the general revelation that God has already known and look at this in verse 16 and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars and God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. Okay, 
to rule over the day and over the night and to separate light from darkness okay even the rotation of the earth and the fact that um, we're talking about this in in my Saturday class where I'm teaching on uh, evangelism explosion and um, the anthropic principle the anthropic principle deals with the fact that if the earth uh, was to spin at a faster rate than what it is we couldn't live here if the earth was to slow up any we would all die if the tilt of the earth was tilted just a little bit more towards the sun we would burn up if it would tilt a little bit back I'm talking about just degrees we would all freeze to death and so all of this stuff is set in perfect order so that you and I can have life and the people who have life have the audacity to say there is no God listen to this now so this is all a part of general revelation so whether you've been in church or you're not in church you know God is going to be able to bring this is the judgment that's coming now watch this and so we are in verse um, 19 and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day and then in verse 20 listen to what the Bible says and God said everything that God creates comes out of God's will God speaks it into existence this is something the text is showing us let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures okay and it only takes you to go to uh, some of these uh, uh, zoological places or the, to the zoo and, and, and go inside and see all of the, the animals that live in the depths of the sea. I mean just uh, creatures you, you never see. You would never see at the light of day because they live at the bottom of the ocean. They have never seen the light of day in that regards. And they live down in the, in the crevices of the, the dark parts of the ocean. And man has gone down there and, and captured them and, and put them in, in, in uh, zoos and uh, in, in zoological places that you can go and look at them so you can see what's at the bottom these swarming living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome listen to this purpose now so God created the great sea monsters and everything living uh, that moves in of every kind with which the water swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was in purpose that it was good that it is living that it is that which I have created the birds to do the birds are doing okay the swarming creatures are doing what they're supposed to do okay all right now let's go to verse 22 and God blessed them okay when you are let me just pause right there parenthetically when you are in purpose God's blessings automatically flow towards you okay you don't have to be looking for a blessing and searching when you're in God's divine purpose the blessings of God automatically flow God bless them saying be fruitful look at this and multiply and fill the earth and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth and there was evening and there was morning the fifth day so you see all of the birds are still multiplying all of the swarming creatures of the uh, of the ocean are multiplying the only time they are in danger is when they are introduced to mankind if you notice when you see some of these uh, shows that are appealing uh, appealing to the about the polar bears in the north it is because of the intervention or the interruption I should say of mankind into their natural habitats have they have they begin to become extinct okay because God has created them in such a manner that they reproduce in the wilderness and wherever they are verse 24 says and God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of every kind. And it was so. And God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind 
and everything that creeps upon the ground of the earth of every kind and God saw that it was good that it was what in purpose okay and then God said here's God again here let us make man humankind that's what man means humankind in our image according to our likeness um, and this this plays into the idea of statues that the kings of the earth would put statues of themselves all around their kingdom because they couldn't be there so they would have statues erected all out the kingdom so we are like God's statues we are God's representatives all over the earth God says I want somebody in the earth realm who represents me I have the winged animals I have the swarming creatures I have the fishes of the sea and the crawling things on the earth but I want something in the earth that represents me and so look at this and and let us have let them have rulership over or dominion over or authority over and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth so you see the the, the natural purpose of man is to have dominion or rulership or responsibility so God has already created us to to take on responsibility okay F for for that which he has created so we are stewards of the earth we should be stewards of God's creation and stewards of the earth we have a responsibility um, ecology to to make sure the earth is the way God wanted it to be okay and this is where uh, a lot of the uh, arguments and fights politically have come now let's go on to verse 27 God had this idea to create uh, a, a, a steward a manager in the earth if you would and so God created humankind in his image and in the image of God he made he created them look at this male and female he created them that both male and female are made in the image of God and they are made equal in the image of God they they do not have dominion over one another but they were to rule together you see see how God now watch this now verse 28 says God bless them okay when you are in purpose the blessings of God flow I'm just gonna say that again because that's why you have to be in God's purpose God's will the blessings God blesses purpose I've created you for this purpose when you are in purpose your blessings flow okay now and God said to them be fruitful and multiply reproduce of your kind and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth and God says see I have given you every here's your health uh, purpose right here here's how we stay healthy in purpose see I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth of all the earth and every tree with the seed in its fruit okay so that's why I don't eat all that fruitless stuff you know seedless stuff I should say you shall have them for food okay so now you see why um, where our health issues come in at we have gone out and just about eaten everything uh, we could get our hands on you know and God is saying you know you have and and every time you go to the doctor or to the hospital the first thing they do is change your diet back to the will of God that's the first thing the hospital is going to do they, they change your diet right back to the will of God and people oh, I don't want to eat this stuff they know what's got to go in your body okay and so some of our sicknesses and our illnesses have come from us outside of the purpose of what God designed our bodies to take in okay and so we got diabetes and high blood pressure 
and heart conditions and all this stuff and we ate our way into those conditions okay and and to every beast of the and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air verse 30 and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life in it I have given every green plant for food look at that God just tells you how to stay healthy in purpose okay so we have to be begging for a lot of healing okay we have to go back to eating the way God wants us to eat and a lot of people you don't eat anything green and God telling you right here in the text it's for your food you know this is what you eat okay and anytime you you look at um, any kind of medication it all comes from the green plants okay they crush them up turn them into white powder somehow in the laboratory sell them to you in the store and sell them for eighty dollars you just eating a plant <laughs> you know and your, your, your medication be hundred and twenty dollars for two pills and all that and they just gone back to what God has said every time I see it all the time okay and watch this and and it was so and God saw that everything that he had made and indeed it was now watch this um, very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day so you see that this Genesis chapter 1 deals nothing with uh, the church deals nothing with the Bible deals nothing with Jesus Christ deals nothing with B Christianity it all deals with just general revelation and everybody is going to have to stand before God the Creator and give an account that they either recognize God or they did not okay so God's reality is known to everybody nobody can deny God's reality now they can try to take God's reality and give it credit to something else which man has done tried to make God uh, non-existent which they have done tried to do okay so I want you to kind of get that now let's uh, if you would let's go to Psalms 14 and then I'm gonna try to get to 19 okay let's go to Psalms 14 because I want you to I want you to guess this general revelation for everybody who's Wednesday in the Word okay I want you to get catch this general revelation because this is so simple for all of us to understand okay so well I ain't got it you know what's gonna happen general revelation I want you to get that in your theology in your mind so you can understand it now go to Psalms 14 and let's look at verse number one um, in Psalms 14 and 1 the Bible says fools say in their heart that is in their will in their desire that which makes you motivate your motivation your heart that which motivates you to do what you do out of your will okay that's what the heart means there is no God okay now the Bible already declares that anybody that you hear this it uh, and the reason why it's calling them a fool is because of the general revelation all around us okay we know I know I didn't make the whales that swim in the ocean that that die down in the ocean and, and can live in the ocean but can't breathe underwater but have to come up and and God made them big enough so they would never get trapped underwater by anything and drown a whale can drown in the very environment it has to live in and and it can not breathe underwater but it can hold its breath for 30 minutes who made that who designed this animal like this that it can't live out of the water but it can't live under the water for more than 30 minutes and so it comes up it spouts out breathes in takes in a breath and goes back down it was a beautiful sight I got a chance to see it uh, when I was in Hawaii you know just off the ocean just watching the whales come up and and grab that breath that's general revelation one in the church just standing out there uh, on the ocean side uh, on a mountain view looking in and over the ocean watching them come up for breath that's general revelation this is what God's gonna be saying you didn't see the you didn't see the whales <laughs> you, know, you, you, you didn't you didn't see them whales that live in water that can't breathe under the water that that gotta come up out of I mean you didn't see that 
You you didn't see these peacocks that that can't really fly, but got feathers, but spread out so beautiful. You you didn't you didn't notice that. So you're not going to be. This is why the Bible calls them fools. Look what the Bible says. Let's continue in verse one of Psalms 14 and one. They are corrupt. Okay. They do abominable things, okay? The reason why I don't want a God, because now I don't have anybody to answer to, now I can do what I want to do. See? The abominable things, things that make that detest God, are abominable things, okay? And there is no one who does good. Notice that now, out of purpose, okay? Not doing what, what you've been designed to do, to live the way God, not meaning that you are... Uh, always perfect in that. It's not that. I'm in purpose, okay? When I'm in purpose, blessings naturally flow my way. When I'm out of purpose, I'm chasing blessings, okay? I want you to catch that now. Look at verse 2, and I'll read this, just a little bit of this. The Lord looks down from heaven, Psalms 14 and 1, on humankind to see if there is any who are wise and who seek after God, my God, he just sitting there just looking. Is there anybody who has general revelation who is just seeking after God? You know, who is searching for God, who wants to know more about God, who is desiring to have a relationship with God. And then what he says in verse 3, they have all gone astray and they are all alike perverse, that is corrupt. And there is no one who does good, no not one. No one is living in purpose. This is this is the fall of humanity. This is the man has gone off course. The birds are still doing what the birds are supposed to do. The beasts of the field doing what God created them to do. The creeping things are doing what they're supposed to do. The 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 swarming creatures in the in the in the in the ocean and in the sea are doing what they're supposed to do. Man is perverse, corrupt, gone off course. Look what the Bible says. They have they no knowledge? This is what God is saying. General revelation. What he's talking about. You know, don't you have any knowledge? All the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord. To call upon the Lord here is, a, is an indication of worship. To seek the Lord. They don't even come to worship me, God is saying. Because they have gone astray. They're perverse. So when we, every Sunday, at, at the grace, we, we bring a call to worship. We are calling people who are seeking God to worship Him. That's what, that's what the call to worship denotes. We are calling people who are seeking God to worship Him. Okay? Verse 5. And, and, and. Look at verse 5, uh, Psalm 14, verse 5. There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. And you who confound the plans of the um, poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Okay? And he just goes on to talk about this deliverance. All that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. Now he's, he's looking at this deliverance. Who's going to deliver this perverse people who have gone astray, who don't acknowledge God, who, who don't know God? When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. He's talking about the land, the people. Okay. Now, so we see, um, um, I mean, man, this, this psalmist is so good. I, I, I really need to read this next one. Because, so you can kind of get to 19. So you can kind of see what's going on. Um, but I may have to read a little bit of this. Let's see. This is this thing is so good. Um, look, at, look at 15. I'm trying to give you some context. So when people say, you know, um, you know, God's going to be like, you, you, you know, this is just general revelation. He's not talking about. You didn't sing in the choir. You didn't urge you. You know, you didn't read your Bible every day. No, you didn't notice um, that lion in the forest. You know, you didn't you didn't see the creeping things on the earth 
and it didn't it didn't click. You didn't create that. The grasshopper in the grass. All right. Look at 15 if you would, because the psalmist is really uh, trying to call us back to this knowledge. And I, I, I if if Pastor have time tonight, we're gonna get get to what I want to talk about tonight as well. <laughs> I'm talking about all this, <laughs> so you can get some background. Look at look at uh, Psalms 15. Who shall abide in God's sanctuary? Look at this. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Okay. Who may dwell on your holy hill? The holy hill, Jerusalem. The tent, the tabernacle that was put up in the wilderness. Those who walk blameless and do what is right. Okay. And speak the truth from their hearts. Okay. Who do not slander with their tongues. And do no evil to their friends nor take up reproach against their neighbor, okay, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, or do not take a bribe against the innocent. Talking about some of the perverse things that were happening in the culture, okay, how man is corrupt. This is how they are corrupt. Those who do these things, shall never be moved okay and then in Psalms 16 he talks about the psalmist is going into the song of trust and security in God it just keeps moving us into this thing and I may not go into all of this but I just wanted to look at some of these because I want you to kind of get to this and he goes let's let's look at a little bit of Psalm 16 protect me O Lord for in you I take refuge. You are my shelter. That's what refuge denotes. I find shelter in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. See how the psalmist now, well, I, am, I have to declare that God is my God. I have no good apart from you. Okay? And as for the whole holy one in the land, they are noble in all is my delight. In whom all is my delight. And he just kind of goes on to this idea of everything that is good and how he's moving back to God because God is the God of security and the God of trust and then in 17 uh, here, here he, he asked God to hear his prayer for uh, deliverance and I'll just read a couple of verses of, of this or if you would he says hear a just cause O Lord attend to my cry give ear to my prayer from my lips free of deceit for for you let my vindication come and let your eyes see the right so he's just calling on the lord to help in deliverance then by the time we get into um verse uh, 18 of the psalmist look what he says in verse 18 and one he's just praising god for the victory that has come i love you O lord my strength the lord is my rock my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge or find shelter or I find protection. Um, look at what he says. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Now, that, that denotion of worth of praise. Why is God worthy of praise? Simply because God is our creator. That's S simple enough reason you see how the sanctuary who's going to enter into the sanctuary so I shall be saved from my enemies and he goes on to deal with this incompetence of debt okay in in 18 and 18 deals with a whole lot of stuff so I don't want to go into all of 18 okay but now let's go over to uh, 19 okay where I had originally said just want to kind of give you that all right, in um, verse 19, uh, chapter 19, um, excuse me, God's glory and creation. Listen to this. Now, the first thing the psalmist denotes what I've been teaching on is natural revelation. Okay? The first six verses are about natural revelation. They're just general revelation. Just, you know, you wouldn't even have to have a church building to know God existed. You could just look around and say, wow. You know, you were born in 19, 
47 or you're born in 1955 uh, or you're born in 1972 or you're born in 1982, you know you, you didn't create all this because you just got here. You know, general revelation, okay? Watch this now. Let's go to um, 19 and 1. Now, the first part is the natural revelation. And this is why we give glory to God, to give glory to God, to give praise to God, to honor God for who He is, our Creator. And I'm going to tell you something. If you learn to praise God just for creation alone, just for God's creation, you know, the glory of God, His ability to create anything else in your life that you are in need of is still there. Look at 19 and 1. The heavens are telling the glory of God. In other words, the heavens speaking, the praises of God. Say, you ain't even got to, you go outside, you look at the stars, the moon, the sky. The heavens are, are singing a song that there's a God. Okay? And, and the firmaments proclaim his handiwork. Just talking about the earth. If you just look around at the mountains and you go to, um, these Niagara Falls in, in, in Canada and you go to the Rocky Mountains in the Midwest and, and you go and look at the Mississippi River, how it runs through the streams and you go to Africa and go to the Victoria Falls and you travel down across uh, the country and uh, through Pennsylvania and you go down to Georgia and you just see off of the coast of Georgia, the islands that are there. You know, you just, the world, the firmaments are singing, God created us, brought us into existence. Proclaim that uh, God's hand was involved in this, okay? And day to day pours forth speech. So it's just every day, it's just declaring as a God. The heavens and the earth are declaring there is a God. Okay? Now, this is what he says, and night to night declares knowledge. Now, verse uh, number three, if you would, there is no speech, nor are there words, their voice is not heard. In other words, what the psalmist is saying, this is a speechless sermon. The preacher ain't even came yet. But on your way to the house of God, the heavens are declaring as a God. On your way to work in the morning, the firmaments are declaring as a God. Riding down the coast of, uh, in, in California, right down that coast, that pretty coast, and you, you can see, you know, just beautiful. You've been traveling across the country. You just get to see, you know, what does man like to do when they, get, when they take some time off work? The first thing people come and say, they want to go on vacation. They want to go to hear a speechless sermon somewhere and they'll tell you oh I'm going to um, um, I'm going to Jamaica or I'm going to such and such I'm going constantly telling you they want to go here see the creation of God somewhere okay so watch this okay and, and people always ask well take some pictures when you get back tell me how it was you know because the earth is just singing this is our God. This is why everybody gonna be able to stand before God and judge. <laughs> he said the earth singing every day that there's a God, the handiwork of God. And you know, I I was traveling um, um down south and we went. It's just amazing. It's amazing how uh, in Kentucky they have the underground caverns and caves. And we took the, the boys uh, years ago when they were younger. I mean, these caverns and caves is amazing. You riding over this road. You don't know all of these caverns and caves exist underground. And the tourists took us through there. When they closed the, the entrance to the door, I mean, you could not see your hand in front of your face. That's how dark it was down there. And just amazing how these things exist in the earth world. All right, let me push on. Now, listen to what he says in verse 3. Um, they, they got these speeches. Learned. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth. Boy, God's going to bring creation into judgment against humanity. That's all he's going to be able to see. He's going to take your vacation photos <laughs> and say, listen, here's where you was. And, and their words to the end of the world. Verse, um, the first, the B part of four. In the heavens, 
he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. Just talking about how how great the sun is, how it covers the whole earth. And when it's, when it's hot in some places, man, it's, it's burning up in places. Look at this. Seven, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. So now he's going into the Torah. He's going into the law of God. That First you have that general revelation. Now you have the scriptural revelation, which is the word of God. We, we've read about that, okay? Let's look at some of this. we got a few minutes. Look at this. How God's um, revelation, the scriptorial revelation, or the revelation of the Word of God, which I've been dealing with and just telling you about this. But look at um, verse um, number 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, complete. That's what perfect means. Reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure. Making wise the simple. Okay? Look at this. The precepts of the Lord are right. Okay, what God is telling you to do is right. Rejoicing uh, the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure. Enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord, just talking about the same thing, are, are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold even much more fine than gold. That even if you seek after God's precepts and God's commandments and God's ordinances, they're more desirable than riches. Sweeter also than honey and dripping of a honeycomb. Verse 11. Now, listen to what he does. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. Okay, so now we see the precepts guide us. The word of God guides us. It gives us ordinance and commandments by which to live in the will of God. But then it also warns us. In keeping in them, there is a great reward. Okay? As we walk in the precepts of God. And prior to this, we, you know, we were talking about the fact that, you know, when people break the laws of our land, there are consequences. And so just like there are consequences in the law of the land, there are consequences when we walk outside of the will of God, right? Verse 12, but who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults, okay? Look what the word does. Whenever I have stuff in me that's hidden, even the word of God comes and reveals it to me, and I have to bring it to my prayer of confession. Okay, and I've preached on that um, just in the previous week about how we are to bring our sins into the prayer of confession. Okay, and we're not to be walking around harboring stuff. So tonight, before you go to bed, you know you've offended someone. You know you take your sins into the prayer of confession because it clears you and helps you um, to receive the rewards of God. Watch this. Um, keep back. Your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Okay? Look at that now. Then I shall be blameless. Now, let me uh, just pause right there real quick. Because I want to read that um, just in another translation real quick for you. Um, and look at the Good, New Good News Bible reads like this. It says in verse 13, it says... Keep me safe also from willful sins, okay? Keep your servant back from the insolent, from willful sins, and do not let them rule over me, okay? So I want you to be clear on that. There are some sins that we willfully do. So he's praying that prayer. And don't let that sin have dominion over me, okay? This is what he's saying. Then I shall be perfect and free from the evil of sin. That's the good news translation, how it translates that same verse. So I want you to kind of get that in your spirit so you can understand 
This is what the law, the word of God is called to do, to warn us, to, 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 to reveal God's revelation. And then notice what he says here um, um, in verse 14. Then here's the quote that you hear quoted sometimes. If you've been in church, if you haven't been in church, you, you probably never heard this. This is the first time you heard it. But in church, you will hear this. It says, somebody will say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And the King James says, in your sight, to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So the words that are coming out of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, should be out of the word, should be out of the word of God, should be acceptable in God's sight. Now, so we 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 meditate on the principles of the word of God. And I try to every Sunday, I try to, I don't know if I succeed all the time, preach and and proclaim those principles out of the word of God so that people will at least have understood some of these uh, enormous stories in the Bible, that they will be able to hear the word of God, and that they will be able to guide their lives by the precepts and the principles and the points that the word of God points us to. So now my mouth and my heart is meditating on these principles and these precepts, and I live out of them. See, this is where the transformation takes place. I'm living out of a certain precept or a principle every day and so I just want you to start to take maybe one precept one one principle that you grab and say you know what that's something that I need to start implementing into my life this is how transformation takes it so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna focus on that one precept or principle and it may be a precept or principle of loving God with all my heart you know I'm just gonna worship God I'm gonna I'm going to be in his sanctuary. I'm going to seek the Lord in worship. I'm, you know, I'm going to love my neighbor as I love myself. I'm going to treat other people the way I would love to be treated. That's a principle. That's a precept that I'm working on, that I'm living out of. And so that when I do that, I please and honor God. Okay? And so this is uh, God's general revelation, the natural revelation sometimes it's called. The, the supernatural revelation or the scriptural revelation and then the psalmist prayer for cleansing and he wants to, he wants to be clean that's what I was telling you um, um, in um, Sunday worship for those of you who are local that you know the confession that comes out of your mouth is so important the prayer of confession all right okay now um, I'm going to uh, probably um, end right there tonight and probably stop right there um, because I, I know I got about five minutes left um, I guess my clock on my computer is a little slow um, 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 okay and I have a question this is a question that has come in who is who is the God of this age that has blinded the minds of the unbelievers okay and they're talking about second uh, Corinthians 4 and 4 where the Bible says the God of this age um, and we're gonna see if I can answer that real quickly um, just in short um, um, let me go to uh, Matthew chapter um, let me see if it's if I'm, I'm thinking about something uh, Matthew chapter 4, I was going to answer that real quick. Um, um, just I can answer it off the top of my head, but I just wanted to kind of put some scriptures in there. Um, if you go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8, I'm going to show you this temptation. Okay? Real quickly, thank you for that question. In, 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 in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, and again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Okay? And said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. 
And Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So right there, when the Bible is speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the God of this world, it's, it's, it's lowercase and it's speaking about the devil and how he is the God of the kingdoms, okay? These man-made kingdoms that we have set up in the earth realm. How man out of their perversion have set up some earthly kingdoms and they believe they are on the top of the world. Okay? But God is the God of creation. So just to answer your question real quickly, it is the devil who blinds their eyes because um, he, he shows them all of the things they can have in the earth realm. And notice how we are bombarded with commercials every day to get stuff that's going to corrupt and corrode with us. Okay? It's just always constantly, you know, get you a new toaster, get you a new microwave, you know, and uh, you wake up early in the morning, infomercials are on. Nothing's wrong with those things, but to, to, to accumulate all those things and think you have conquered is really a false uh, leading. So that's who the God of this world is. So thank you so much for, those, for that question. Um, it's the devil who has blinded the eyes of the unbelief, okay? And sometimes he's referred to as the God of this world. And one of his objectives is to get us to worship him for the man-made kingdoms, if you would, that he has set up, okay? And to pull attention away from God, okay? And you see how people will kill people over material things in our world, blinded by the God of this world, okay? I mean, people will kill and over a pair of gym shoes, over over some jeans, over a car, over all this stuff that's going to corrode and fade away. Okay? All right. Let me open up the phone lines uh, because I know my time is up. All callers are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. All right. This is all right. Okay, I have another question. Um, can you address Genesis 127? Does doesn't that have to do with man and woman creating and two men can't create or two women can't create? Um, yes, it, it does. In Genesis chapter 127, she's asking about um, God's purpose for man and woman. And I guess this leads to a fact of the question about uh, homosexuality and lesbianism. Is this what you're asking? Yes. Um, God's purpose again in the earth realm. Yes. That man and woman were designed to co-create. Um, that's just God's purpose in the earth realm. Now, of course, um, we live in a society that um, has uh, not only... Um, um, celebrated but also confirmed other relationships now I don't get into a big arguments about those but I do say that this is God's purpose and will in the earth and you see how man regardless of how we feel about it uh, has throughout the generations gone off the will of God um, and and we have to live by the purpose of God. So thank you for that question. That is a good question. All right. Um, yes, questions, anybody that we have? Thank you for those questions that came in through our Facebook and Twitter um, uh, accounts. Um, any other questions that you may have on the phone line? Your phone lines are unmuted. And if you have any questions, I can answer a few questions before we get off the line tonight or give any clarity or anything that I need. You just push star six on your phone if you have any questions. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Um, oh. Okay, I missed the first part of your question. 
What did you say again? Could you repeat it, please? I'm sorry. Oh, can a person be re can, can a person be restored? Is that your question? Uh, yes. I mean, people can be restored. Of course, if you backslidden, yes, yes, you can be restored. Does Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that question. Yes, that's why we're we call it grace, and God is calling us to call people to repentance, and even for people who have backslidden. All right. Is there another question uh, before we end our Wednesday in the Word uh, session tonight, or any other comment? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, well, praise God. Amen. Pray for me that I keep it awesome. <laughs> no, I'm just pray that I keep it clear <laughs> so it can be awesome. <laughs> pray for me. Amen. Thank you so much, sweetie. Any any other questions or comments uh, that we have tonight? And then if not, uh, we're going to get ready to go ahead. Who is that? Okay. Yes. I, I, I just love that. I just love that. So okay. thank you for that. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, a speechless sermon. Uh, I call it. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us um, back. And I should be in Wednesday Word. We'll be back next week. Um, and we'll be back here at the same time in the same place, uh, both on Ustream and through our conference call. And uh, bring a friend with you uh, to Wednesday in the Word. Okay, is there somebody else on the line? I didn't know if somebody else had plugged in. Yeah, go ahead. I don't want to. Hi, hi. I like the word of the author. It's a wonderful word. So when the light and the dark, when the Yeah, I see what you're saying. That everything that grows starts in darkness is what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. I appreciate that. That's excellent. Yeah, so yeah, God has to bring us to the light, and we'll do that. All right, praise God tonight for another Wednesday in the Word, um, and I am back, uh, and I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, on Ustream, as well as those who called in via our conference call, and uh, we're going to get ready to get out of here tonight. Let's, let's end in prayer, uh, wherever you are, uh, let's pray. Father, we love you, and thank you for the time we shared in your Word tonight. Thank you as we walk through the Word, and Help people to understand your word and your general revelation and the scriptural revelation, God. And now, God, we bless every home tonight, every person, wherever they are, whether they are at home, on the job, at work, in Michigan, in another state. We pray for them. And we will see you back here for another Wednesday in the Word. 
In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. All right. Good night, everyone. And we love you. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. Mm-mm.